Welcome to another edition of Heart of a Pronghorn, where we catch up with former pronghorns and alumni of the University of Lethbridge. Today, we would like to welcome Pauline Van Russel, who played for the women's basketball team from 1985 to 89. Uh, she played 58 games for the pronghorns and graduated with a degree in education. Um, and then also went on and, and uh, represented, the, represented Canada at the Olympics. Uh, we'll get into that later, but uh, welcome Pauline. Thank you, Ian. You know, first off, you know, uh, I believe you're originally from Bow Island. Um, and just, uh, you know, why did you pick the University of Lethbridge? Well, um, Bow Island, small town, small school. So I wasn't sure how uh, big my options were at the time. We, or at that time, UofL was just starting to gain some success. So it became an appealing option. Education program was quite uh, well regarded. So that was what I was focusing on as well. So it became pretty easy for me to pick U of L. I also, um, there was a coach at Medicine Hat High that strongly recommended um, U of L to me and kind of made the first introduction to the coach at that time so I could get my foot in the door. Nice. And then, you know, now, Thinking back at your, you know, your time with uh, the Pronghorns and at the University of Lethbridge and, you know, what are some of your, uh, you know, fondest memories of your time with uh, the Pronghorns? Um, well, I enjoyed the team itself, the actual people, and that was a big bonus. Um, at the time, Louisa Zerbe was the coach and she was a very intense coach that demanded a lot from us. And I think we all responded to that. So we saw success kind of right away. So my first year, we went to nationals for the first time. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and subsequent years, we went, we hosted once and missed a wild card one of the other years. So it was a, it was a good run for us. Uh, a lot of good travel, a lot of just good memories as I was privileged to work with uh, good people on a team. You know, and one of the things that, you know, really interests me in, in your story was how you went from basketball to rowing and then to get to that elite level in rowing. Um, you know, how did that come about for you? Well, um, when I graduated, I taught for a few years and I think very early on, even though I enjoyed most of it, I, I didn't see myself retiring um, as a teacher or seeing out my retirement as a teacher. So I started looking at different programs that might interest me. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking of my best sporting years were at university. It was a great place to meet people and to get some success. So I thought, you know, if there's a sport, if I go to university and there's a sport that interests me, I will um, look into it. So I landed on the um, industrial design program at U of A and decided to look into both cycling and rowing. So when I got there for the first few days, I kind of researched both clubs and it was post 96 Olympics where the rowing team had some huge success. Um, so that was appealing to me. I didn't do a lot of research. There wasn't really the interweb back then. So, so I just kind of looked at rowing and thought I, I might be able to manage that. I was quite, felt quite strong. And then when I was at U of A, I attended the first meeting and I would just have to say I was lucky. It was the right year, the right coach. Um, I don't know if I would have went the year before or two years later that I would have achieved what I did. So I really attribute it to the coach at the time, Thomas Schaefer. He just came in that year. He hadn't coached before. He knew a bit about what the national team looked for. In, not that he was shooting for a national ranking coming out of U of A. <laughs> he was um, 
he just kind of knew what athlete he was looking for to have some success. So he had a pretty rigid tryout schedule, three days of just running. Um, we went on the rowing machine. None of us had been on one before. Didn't really know how it worked, what, how to achieve success. We just yanked on it and hoped we uh, got a good <laughs> score. So he picked um, eight women and then a spare four. And we just raced in some Western Canada regattas in the fall and we, we were winning. So it was, it was pretty awesome. So I had an awesome coach. He picked a great team. And then we went out to Victoria and do what's called head racing. So it's uh, kind of a time trial fashion where one boat goes and then the next boat, depending on the speed, gets to start 30 to 40 seconds later. So it's, you're basically chasing someone. So you can kind of, you can kind of see if you're pulling away from a boat and you can also see if someone's gaining on you. So it's a bit of a mind game, positive and negative for you. So our first day there, we, we ended up winning and um, that is unheard of you to beat UBC and UVic as a, as a novice crew, not as a, varsity. So that, that was amazing. And then, um, you know, from that point to have that success out on the West coast, um, gave us a lot of encouragement. So the coach just said, if you guys want to keep training, or if any of you want to keep training through the winter, I'll be there for you. So I kind of said, Oh, well, let's, let's give that a go. And uh, I trained with one other woman all, all through the winter and then raced as a pair that following summer. Yeah, and when you think of rowing, you don't typically think of uh, athletes coming out of, out of Alberta. And, you know, it, it tends to be a little bit more of a, a West Coast uh, uh, sport. And, um, you know, it must have been a, a unique challenge for you guys to uh, – you know, train during the winter and, and keep motivated for, uh, for those things. Yeah, the training was pretty intense. It was primarily on the rowing machine and they do have a, a rowing tank at the U of A. So we could work on a bit of technique, but the winter was yeah predominantly weights and on the rowing. So yeah, it's, it gives a variety. Winter is indoor, uh, summer is on the water. And, you know, how long did it take you to get onto kind of the national scene with uh, Rowing Canada? Um, so I started the fall of 96 and then raced uh, across Canada the summer of 97 with my pair partner, Teresa Rivlin. And then there we, we did, did quite well. So enough to get a little bit of recognition I guess. And I attended a spring camp. I was invited the summer of 98 to try out. So I went to a camp in March and then tried out that summer, did not make it, but chose to stay in London, Ontario and race the whole Ontario circuit and um, mostly in Ontario. And then he Canadian Henley's hosted out there and Canada Cup was hosted. So after that summer, um, I received the basic carding, which at that point I think was $347 a month. So with that, I had to decide what I was doing with university because my program ran year long rather than semester. So in November, I just decided uh, if I'm going to try to make it, I need to make the move to Victoria and get some more training in. So the December of 98, uh, moved to Victoria with the goal to make the team on nine, uh, for 99. So made the team, but it was a secondary, didn't make the eight, made the four. And it just happened that St. Catharines was hosting world championships that summer. So got to race in an international regatta, which was nice. And then just carried on 
training full time moving between Victoria and London, Ontario, and shot for the 2000 Olympics and was the last cut on my side for the eight. So it was a little devastating. Um, but I still had put my university on hold. So I, because it was year round, I went back in January 2001 to finish off my degree and then just kind of made the choice of, I may as well give this another go. So kind of committed to the next four years to try hard. Well, and then, you know, obviously your work paid off being on, on the Olympic team in 04 and, and being part of the, I believe it was the women's eight team uh, for that. And, you know, just speak to, you know, that experience and, and representing your country at uh, the absolute highest level. Well, that, that's for sure. It's the highest level and very, it is exciting, even though we didn't um, attain the success we had hoped for. Um, it's a, it's a big show. It's, it was pretty exciting. Leading up to it, we, you know, 2001, we went to world championships, didn't do that great. 2002, we, we really started to see that we were doing not too badly. I raced in the four and we were silver and the pair was bronze medal. And then the six of us plus two others raced in the eight and we finished sixth. So that gave us a little bit of hope, I guess. 2003 is uh, considered the Olympic qualifier. So people are trying pretty hard to qualify, whether you qual you don't really qualify yourself, but you qualify your boat for that country. So it was a, that was probably the most exciting racing that I had seen up to that point. It was a windy day when it's not fair, the umpires either postpone or shift lanes. We were at the start line and it was, there was kind of a berm on one side. So it was clear those crews were a little more protected. So we got shifted over once and you know we were just not in the good lane. We were in lane five as opposed to lane two, which would have been nicer, but um, Luck was on our side. Uh, the U.S. team caught a crab, which is like catch your oar and you know, knock your boat off kilter. Um, it, it was enough to make us push through nicely and we're bronze medals there. So that was that qualified us automatically for the Olympics. And then the 2003-04 training season was it was, it was difficult. There was still some switching as to what would be the fastest eight. So it was a very stressful year. There was injuries, switch ups of bodies in the boat. And ultimately it wasn't as fast as it could have, should have, and we would have liked it to be. You know, when you think back of, you know, what are some of the things you take away from that experience, even though you didn't, uh, you know, achieve the success that you were looking for? And again, the, the team um, and the teammates are amazing. We still get together now, whatever, 17 years later, at least once a year from wherever we're at. So you can't, I mean, you can't buy that kind of friendship there's just so many things that you go through um, through training that, you know, it's just a bond for life. So that is amazing. The Olympics itself was, it's a, it was amazing experience. You know, the, the racing itself was heartbreaking, but the environment is, it's, it's pretty breathtaking. So that, um, that, that was a lifetime experience that I do not regret in the least. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's such a unique, uh, unique story, you know, you know, spending, you know, your time in basketball and, and then, you know, six to eight years later, getting into a new sport and, you know, it, uh, it's kind of a, a really neat story and, you know, it was good to, to catch up you with, with that. Um, you know, now tell us what you're doing now. Well, right now, uh, total switch of careers again. I work for a custom home builder and do some design work, mostly project management for either the home build or some high-end renovations. 
which was part of what I went back to university for. So I came away with a product design degree, but ended up just doing more of the design work in CAD, but then it just evolved more into project management. So that's what I do for my work. Um, I still try to play some women's basketball, play senior women's. Starting to fall apart though, so that's kind of sad. So I'm shifting uh, to more mountain biking. Bought a kayak last summer. It's not at all like rowing, but you know, it's on the water and people assume I'm good at it, but I'm really, no. <laughs> it's all, all on an exercise level now, as opposed to any sort of training. Well, that's good. You know, just kind of one final question and it's just more of, you know, how did your time with uh, the University of Lethbridge and Pronger Athletics, uh, you know, kind of shape where you went and, and help you uh, down the path that you chose? I would, I would say the hard work. Um, I think we trained really hard um, and that work ethic, I feel, um, carries on through your life. The friends that I've attained also carry on through life. We still try to get together often and pretend to play basketball in a Canmore tournament every year. It's whichever alumni we can get together. Um, I did quite enjoy the small school atmosphere of U of L. I also love the the whole architecture of the university. It just it fascinates me. I think it's a really cool setting. Um, I like that they were able to offer such a high quality education program for a small university and so close to home. Um, I just I just think sport is so important for life. I think you learn a lot. I think you learn how to fail. Uh, you learn from that. You learn how to keep going. Um, I would just encourage anyone if they had the ability to manage their schedule and play on some sort of competitive team and still keep their schoolwork up. That's excellent skills for life to get along with others and to do some time management. Well, I really appreciate you taking your, your time to, today to, to join us and, and fill us in on, on your journey. Uh, so thank you very much. And you know, we look forward to uh, producing another Heart of a Pronghorn in the near future. Thank you. Well, thank you for the time. And it was a pleasure meeting you, Ian.